Hello, I'm Abhinav and so I have been placed in Qualcomm for the role of a software engineer. So in our campus, uh, Qualcomm came for two positions, which was an hardware engineer or a software engineer. I applied for the software engineer, engineer job profile. So the basic procedure for the selection was, first there was a resume shortlisting for which there was a CGPA cutoff of 7.5. Initially, it was 7.5, but later it was reduced to 7. So anyone above uh, CGPA 7 got selected for the, for the rounds. The next round was a written test. So the written test was organized in three sections. Uh, the first section being aptitude, the section, uh, second section being uh, C programming, and the third section being communication, gate level communication questions. After clearing the written exams, uh, we faced two rounds of technical interviews. Uh, both the rounds of technical interviews were around uh, of one hour. And then there was a final HR interview. So the first uh, portion was of the written test. So the written test was divided into three sections. First, we'll come to section A, which was the aptitude section, which had 20 questions. And we were given 30 minutes to attempt. Uh, we were given, given 30 uh, minutes to attempt the whole section. So in, uh, the, in terms of difficulty level, the questions were quite easy, but uh, they were really less time allotted as they were data interpretation questions, which took quite a lot of time uh, in understanding those questions. So overall, I would like to say that uh, the level of questions is easy, but speed is an important factor in this section. The second section uh, was a uh, multiple choice programming based questions. Uh, so in this, uh, the level of the questions is again from easy to mid. All the questions mostly were based on conceptual uh, bitwise operator questions or uh, your data type questions or point, uh, related to pointers linked list. And uh, here in this section also, there were 20 questions and 30 minutes were allotted to solve these questions. Coming on to the last section, the last section had uh, around uh, 15 to 20 questions, uh, which, cons uh, considered, uh, which consisted of gate level communication questions. So in this case, uh, the major topics which are to be covered are uh, signals and systems, uh, your communication systems question, which includes analog modulation, digital modulation. And uh, the main part uh, consisted of uh, uh, signals and systems, which uh, discusses the property of signals like linearity, causality, time invariance. So these were some important topics which were asked in the third section. So overall, the overall the test was uh, in the you can say the difficulty level of the test was from easy to mid, but uh, the time allotted for each section was less. So you need to be like really fast. Or, and have the answers ready just as you see the questions. Okay, so for the preparation uh, of the for the written test, what I did was first I uh, revised all of my aptitude. So for that, I did a revision of the gate level aptitude questions. And then I went on to India Bix and I practiced some uh, data interpretation questions and uh, some uh, time distance questions, uh, work related questions, and then ratio, proportion, mixtures, allegation questions from India bits. And uh, for C programming, uh, I refer to Geeks for Geeks. Uh, there are uh, really good and uh, really insightful questions available there. There are, uh, I think there is a 65 uh, question set which you can uh, use to prepare uh, for aptitude uh, examination. They will also help you further in uh, interviews also. So that's a really good, uh, a really good uh, platform to prepare for your programming, uh, programming tests. And uh, coming on to the communication questions, for communication questions, the gate level revision of your communication uh, subjects, the signals and systems and uh, your communication systems like uh, for analog and digital modulations is more than enough because each and every question that was asked uh, were off gate level uh, one mark questions. Okay, so coming on to the interview rounds, uh, I had three interview rounds which consisted of the technical uh, round one, technical round two, and then an HR round. So 
in my first technical interview round uh, first uh, i was asked to introduce myself after introducing myself he had a look through my look over through my resume uh, he then came on to uh, talk about rtos concepts he asked me which subjects i have studied so after telling him what subjects we had studied studied in the first two semesters he asked me about some os and rtos concepts he asked me like what is the difference between a gbos like general purpose os and an real time os then he came on to mutex and semaphores what is the difference between mutex and semaphores why are they used so why is there a need of a binary semaphore when we already have a mutex then he came on to scheduling strategies which are the scheduling strat- strategies that we used in rtos uh he asked pretty much in detail about round robin scheduling priority based scheduling what is the need for those scheduling so in these questions basically he was trying to uh ask me why why those uh, scheduling procedures were needed instead of asking what is the scheduling procedure he, so he was trying to i think uh, take the need of why the scheduling procedures were needed after that uh these were like first 15 minutes of the round and then the rest of the 45 minutes uh he asked me about c programming questions so in c programming questions uh, they were like pretty simple questions based on array linked list like uh attaching a node in the middle of a linked list or a array deleting the second highest number from an array but in, uh, i was given three programs and in each of the programs first he was asking me a theoretical approach like how i am going to approach this problem and he was seeking multiple solutions like when i gave him the when i gave the interview the first solution he asked for the second solution when i gave him the second solution he asked for a third solution and after giving him a third solution then he moved on to uh, moved on uh, to the hacker rank platform and he told me to write a compilable code uh, for the given solution third solution second solution or one uh, first solution any one of the solutions which i have given uh so the second round the major portion was uh, focused on c programming then my uh, second interview round uh was uh, went on for around 1 hour 15 minutes in the second round uh, i was again asked to introduce myself and then i was asked what all i was asked in the first round then the major portion of this second round round was focused on my projects which i have uh, given on in my resume so i had to explain the projects why the projects were needed in the first place like if i have uh, done a project there should be a need of the project why the project was done what was the need for the project and then there were some questions uh, involving the project like uh, uh, some doubts regarding the project and some questions uh, regarding the project so uh, out of my projects uh, three projects were chosen one was uh, fft implementation on verilog uh the second project uh, which was chosen was uh was my research practice project uh, sensor fusion project and the third project which was uh, uh, on which the questions were asked was again uh, based on a floating point divider uh, which is implemented in verilog hdl so the major portion of the interview uh, was uh, based uh, w- was on projects then uh, uh, for 10 to 15 minutes or some c uh, program, program programming questions were discussed so in this part again the interviewer uh, seeked multiple uh, solutions from me and told me to write a completely compilable code all the questions uh, c programming questions which were asked were pretty simple but the approaches which they seeked were multiple and at last uh, he gave me a simple puzzle which i had to solve within 2 minutes after that uh, we had an hr interview round which was quite short uh, in that round the interviewer just asked uh, what which is my hometown where do i live and what are my job locations preferences and then he let me know that if you are uh, selected uh, we will get a email from our list uh, so my preparation strategy was so first i went through a uh, youtube and just looked at interview experiences on how people face uh, the technical interviews especially uh, 
we knew i knew that my interview is going for qualcom so what are the step preparation strategies or the questions which were asked or the preparation strategies which were adopted by people so personally i looked at uh, some videos which are present in planet skills uh, i looked at the interview experiences and then i formulated my preparation strategy around those uh, around those experiences so uh, i had a look at that those videos of uh, three four months before our placement season began and after that uh, i lo- i first decided in which area or in which field i am interested so i was more inclined towards uh, software field so uh, i chose software as my first preference and decided to appear for it i suggest uh, whichever field you feel is your strong suit and you feel you are more interested in uh, you should appear uh, for uh, you should appear for that field instead of uh, going with the masses and uh, just applying what more uh, where more people apply because uh, in the at the end of the day uh, your interest uh, and where you excel will be your uh, strong point so for the preparation what i did is first i uh, decided to brush up my c programming skills for that i referred to geeks for geeks and i would suggest to try to write small programs uh, no don't go for complex programs because the sometimes the interviewers would ask you to write a fully compilable code and it may happen that uh, we are very good at c but there will be some small mistakes which may occur due to uh, not having the habit of writing a fully compilable code so i would suggest practice writing some initially some small codes uh, and try to write them from scratch so that uh, we get a you get a hang of it on how to write a fully compilable code and then look at uh, uh, the basic concepts uh, some of the most important concepts which i felt were arrays linked list pointers trees and uh, bit uh, uh, um, you can say bit arithmetic and data types so these were some important uh, topics which i initially covered from c programming and then i Uh, look over on to some complex programs and for all of this i refer to a single site geeks for geeks i would suggest uh, whichever site you refer uh, follow a single uh, uh, single site because they have a very well designed designed pat- pattern like if you decide to follow program bits so follow a pattern uh, given by program bits because all 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 the material on all the sites is good but Uh, your approach decides on how much you can cover and how thoroughly you cover things the s- second thing which i felt the important subjects which are taught to us in the semester first semester and second semester related to our related to the profile which you are applying so in my case these were embedded system design uh, real time os and software for embedded systems so also there is a subject called device driver which is an important part but as it wasn't taught to us uh i didn't prepare for it much uh, separately i just brushed up to through some concepts which is not required because if uh, the subjects which you have studied you should be first thorough in those subjects so uh, for rtus uh, i just covered my lectures uh, and uh, uh, for some concepts i just uh, went through some uh, sites and googled the concepts because for rtus i don't believe like there's a single site which provides you with all the data or all the right answers so i would suggest like find important topics and important questions which are asked in rtus through by going through some interview archives and interview videos which are available online and then deciding on uh, which questions to you which topics you should ta- target and then uh, try to google the answers for them and uh, for embedded system designs uh, a very deep knowledge is not needed you just need to know the basics and uh, same goes for the software for embedded design for device drivers uh, i just brushed up my concepts because uh, uh, this uh, also shows the effort you put in uh, in interviews and for preparation so if we you have uh, not been taught a particular subject and then uh, in addition you prepare for it it gives you an extra edge 
then i decided after this i decided to go over my projects which i had uh, given in my resume and study the topics related to those projects so that will help uh, you really because uh, interviewers look how you approach the project and how you are how much you are thorough in your project because understanding each and every aspect of your project is really really important uh, in a, uh, is really really important in our interviews then uh, what i would like to suggest in the end is uh, if you don't crack the interview uh, you shouldn't be disheartened because there are plenty more opportunities and one should have faith in his preparation uh, preparation level and preparation skills and all the best uh, to all the appearing participants which are going to appear for the interview